the election was heavily rigged. Listen to what I Ike had to say. Express my uh, extreme shock at Mr. Boyega and his comments that widespread, his definition of widespread. Uh, on the Leke, Leke Expressway alone, we saw violence at Itadoi, Kate, Body, um, um, VGC. We saw stress at uh, Thomas Estate, Abraham Adesa. That's five places on the Leke Expressway alone. Um, if that isn't widespread, I'm not sure what his definition of widespread is. Plus, he says the Lagos State didn't, his party didn't uh, weaponize, you know, uh, bigotry. But it, there's a picture circulating with Mr. Jibril Gawat in a procession. And yes. I, what could have been um, a protest, I don't know, just a procession. And right beside him, there's a sign that says, my Lagos, not yours. And then he puts in small caps, you are here because of your business. If that isn't bigotry... I'm not sure what is. And that right there is a senior assistant, senior special assistant to the governor on new media. That, I mean, if that, is, if that is their posture, then you're completely endorsing bigotry, division, you know, oppression of a people. If you take the Lagos economy and take out all the non-Lagosian um, businesses and owners of businesses, you take the Tony Illumilus and the Jim Obvious, and you classify everybody as Igbo and you throw out all their business. What is there to Lagos? So I think, quite frankly, uh, the APC should have done more when MC Oluomo came out and made... I mean, you, you investigated and then did what? You know, nothing has happened to him. We've seen no public reprimand. We've seen nobody disavowing themselves from his association. We've seen him lose no title. We've seen nobody take responsibility for his action, not even him. So you said you sent him to go and clear his name. If truly the Lagos State Governor has no, no, does not believe in what MC Oloma said, he should, there should be some serious disciplinary actions. He should face charges. And then the party must separate themselves from him. But um, that's just my opinion. I'm just an individual. Back to what we were discussing. Um, the VGC... Uh, experienced some difficulties with the presidential elections, just like everybody else did in the rest of um, the country. First of all, the, when the INEC officials arrived, I did that. But before I do, I, who's marching with people who say, this is not your Lagos, it is our Lagos. You've got to extend an olive branch, you've got to stretch out a hand, you've got to put out a hug, you've got to let Lagos know where you stand. That's what I think. Thank you so much. Uh, stand up and reunite the nation. Tell us all, tell everybody. You don't agree with MC Olomo. You don't agree with Jubro Gawat, who's marching with people who say, this is not your Lagos, it is our Lagos. You've got to extend an olive branch, you've got to stretch out a hand, you've got to put out a hug, you've got to let Lagos know where you stand. That's what I think. Thank Going you. up to the election, the governors had uh, invested a lot of political capital um, in determining who becomes president. And for the PDP, you saw the G5 um, governors on the one hand. Um, and the APC, of course, you saw what happened and what played out in the APC uh, presidential primaries. Um, so it was clear that uh, the governors had made for themselves new friends um, and new foes, and some realignment would be needed post the presidential elections. Now, once the presidential elections had um, been taken care of, um, what you then had was um, a tough war, as it were. Mm. Uh, for some governors, for example, like the Delta State um, governor, uh, and even the River State governor, their political relevance and existence was pretty much on the line. Um, so, given other local variables and other local conditions, uh, we had projected and anticipated that... Uh, the gubernatorial elections would be, of course, the most keenly con contested and, uh, um, you know, again, fraught with um, violence. So yes. I would say it was expected and anticipated. Million people, and we do the math that's about one Nigerian police officer to more than 537 Nigerians. So it clearly seems we're playing a game where we're hobbled with one hand tied behind our backs when it comes to security. So, what do you think the handling of the election security can tell us about Nigeria's approach to its, its normal, unfortunately abnormal, let me use that word, security challenges? There's not much to learn, really, from the elections, uh, because where would you start from, really? Where do you want to start from? 
you want to start from the INEX um, director of security who has to rely on the police and the army and the DSS and the NSCDC for support um, but cannot fund the operation um, you, or do you want to talk about the Nigerian police that has uh, a very uh, mere bare bones budget um, capital capex of that budget is not up to 10 percent or the Nigerian army that is short staff where do you begin to start from in doing a post-mortem um, in terms of security? Um, I, I mean, for this election, as, as always, Nigeria Nigeria has happened to the Nigerian police force. Nigeria has happened to the Nigerian army. Um, we're losing officers every day. We're losing soldiers. If you lose a colonel, that's a lot. Nigeria has lost the years the person stayed in the NDA. The courses the person has gone through, the years of experience, while losing officers, even in the police, in the police service, uh, policemen are, are being shot, and there's no Medicare for them. There's no proper care for their families. So where do we where do we start from in this whole systemic mess to begin to say uh, why did the election security not go right? It's like trying to put something on nothing. Uh, I can do the things and continue to allow the things happen. But if Nigeria wants to become a nation like the top nations of the world, yeah. there must be credibility in its election, and that can only be brought by justice. And that can only be brought by justice. Kule, a fantastic place.